Discussions about why the United States lost the Vietnam War focus on actions taken after American ground troops arrived in 1965. They could never succeed because the war had already been lost. Ho Chi Minh was the most popular man in all of Vietnam, and his soldiers were respected fighters for independence. They had defeated the French and later the Army of South Vietnam created by the American CIA. American soldiers fought for a nation that didn't exist. Americans are surprised to learn that Ho Chi Minh once worked as a cook in Paris, London, and Boston. He admired the American War for Independence and the U.S. Constitution. Ho Chi Minh was a communist, but communism was sold as a movement to evict foreign rulers and share the wealth. This was very appealing to the Vietnamese people, most of whom were poor rice farmers with no money or health care. The United States supported Ho Chi Minh during World War II, whose Viet Minh guerrilla army controlled rural Vietnam and fought the Japanese occupiers. The U.S. Army sent training officers and tons of arms, pictured here with Ho Chi Minh. Japan had routed or imprisoned French troops based in Vietnam in 1941. After World War II, the British and Chinese arrived to evacuate Japanese troops. American military officers accompanied Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi, where on September 2, 1945, he declared Vietnam's independence from France, something recently deceased American President Franklin Roosevelt had encouraged. U.S. Army Major Archimedes Patty stood on the stage with Ho Chi Minh during the address before 400,000 people and listened to him quote passages from the U.S. Declaration of Independence. The Viet Minh Army grew larger and took control of Vietnam. Unfortunately, France wanted to reestablish its empire, so in 1946 reclaimed its Indochine colony. French forces made surprise landings and took control of several major cities. This was opposed by American President Eisenhower in most nations. Major battles occurred between the French and the Viet Minh. American views changed once the Korean War began in 1950. The CIA and Pentagon generals felt more comfortable with the French as allies in Vietnam to counter communist China. The United States began funding most of the French military effort against the Viet Minh. This was unnecessary because the Viet Minh could have been strong allies against China, which is a traditional enemy of Vietnam. However, France was a NATO ally, so Washington formally recognized the French-sponsored Vietnam government of Emperor Bao Dai. This puppet leader lived mostly in France and had the largest yacht in Monaco. The Viet Minh were betrayed by the Americans, so accepted aid from China and the Soviet Union to continue their war for independence. The American-equipped French forces were no match for the Viet Minh. This culminated with the epic March 1954 Battle of Dien Bien Phu, where a large French force found itself trapped. Proposals were floated to save the French by employing nuclear weapons or landing American troops. However, the pointless and bloody Korean War had just ended, and American politicians had no desire for another conflict. Almost 3,000 French soldiers were killed and 12,000 captured at Dien Bien Phu. France lost interest in ruling Indochina, having suffered 140,000 casualties in eight years of fighting, more than half of whom had been killed. Peace negotiations in Geneva led to an agreement for the gradual French withdrawal and the release of French POWs with national elections planned for 1956. The defeated French forces quickly withdrew from northern Vietnam, but were permitted to remain in southern Vietnam for two years until the national elections. The vast majority of Vietnamese supported independence, led by proven patriot Ho Chi Minh, but the CIA refused to accept defeat. In an effort to reduce Ho Chi Minh's popularity, the CIA established a huge Saigon military mission under Air Force Colonel Edward Lansdale. He spent millions of dollars to create a new nation that became known as South Vietnam as a bulwark against communist expansion. At the same time, the United States took charge of remnants of the former French colonial army and dispatched some 300 American military advisors to expand it. In 1954 and 1955, 
Lansdale's propaganda campaign, known as Operation Exodus, convinced over a million North Vietnamese Catholics and French collaborators to flee to the South to avoid genocide. With the aid of the U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet and CIA proprietary airlines, evacuees fled as news cameras captured dramatic footage of what would be shown worldwide. The campaign slogan, God Has Gone South, reverberated around the world and black and Ho Chi Minh's reputation. However, flooding South Vietnam with a million refugees caused resettlement problems for years and led to unrest among dissatisfied refugees, some of whom joined the local Viet Cong. The CIA needed a leader for their new nation and found him living in New Jersey. Nyo Dien Diem was Western educated and spoke excellent French and English. The CIA introduced him to American congressmen and the media as a future leader of Vietnam. He was intelligent, likable, and Catholic. However, Vietnam was only 10% Catholic, and Diem was not trusted by Southern peasants because he was from a wealthy family in North Vietnam. Moreover, he had collaborated with both the Japanese and French occupiers by filling high-level government positions, so had fled Vietnam after the Japanese were expelled, fearing retaliation, and now returned sponsored by the Americans. Diem was anointed the leader of South Vietnam after a CIA-rigged referendum in 1955, where he got 98.9% of the overall vote. In some areas, he was so popular that he got more votes than the number of registered voters. Diem refused to participate in the 1956 national elections agreed to in Geneva by stating the South Vietnamese had not been consulted. Diem and the Americans knew that he would easily lose an election to Ho Chi Minh. The Viet Minh were not surprised that the Americans ignored the Geneva Accords, since the Americans had already double-crossed them by supporting the return of the French colonial army years before. They resumed their war for independence by quietly sending soldiers and weapons to the south to attack America's army of South Vietnam. Lansdale's anti-communist propaganda caused further problems. He used the threat of Chinese invasion to unify South Vietnam. This caused problems because Chinese traders were key to the Vietnamese economy, as they transported tools, medicine, and other goods to villages and exchanged them for rice and other food. Ethnic Chinese were 5% of the population, but owned more than half the businesses, so there was already resentment among Vietnamese. Lansdale's effort resulted in attacks on Chinese and thousands fled overseas, causing major economic disruptions in South Vietnam. Lansdale implemented land reform to win hearts and minds. However, this caused resentment because the land was seized from large owners and given to refugees from the north. There was no legal system to resolve local disputes about water rights and road access since Lansdale abolished the effective colonial justice system established by the French. Political opposition arose to Diem after he appointed thousands of Catholics from North Vietnam to government and army positions, replacing Southerners. Protests and riots were brutally suppressed by Diem's army, which struggled to counter the growing number of Viet Cong independence fighters. Diem instituted a nationwide military draft to build up his American-funded army, which was very unpopular. Most of his army had no desire to fight, so American aerial bombing was often employed, which killed large numbers of innocent civilians and terrorized everyone. His generals were not nationalists, but corrupt opportunists who clashed with each other. Thousands of American advisors were integrated into this army to limit looting and infighting. By 1963, the Viet Cong controlled large areas of South Vietnam as violence continued to escalate while support for Diem declined further. The number of American military advisors had soared to 16,000 men, yet South Vietnamese soldiers lacked enthusiasm. Diem grew desperate and secretly sought a compromise to unite the nation with Ho Chi Minh. The CIA disapproved, so organized a coup to remove him, which resulted in his death in 1963. This demonstrated that South Vietnam was not a nation, but just a tool of the American empire. Many senior American officials had opposed killing Diem. John McCone, who was CIA director at the time, 
predicted that removing Diem would result in a further deterioration of the military situation. He later recalled telling President Kennedy why removing Diem was a mistake. Mr. President, if I was a manager of a baseball team and I had only one pitcher, I would keep him on the mound whether he was a good pitcher or not. Historians debate what happened next. Some say that President Kennedy decided to give up and pull out American advisors, which is one reason why he was assassinated. Others say Kennedy just discussed removing some advisors, but worried about the impact in Asia if Vietnamese communists prevailed. Once President Johnson assumed office, he made it clear that the United States would never abandon its effort to create South Vietnam, and the billions of dollars in spending would continue to flow to the military-industrial complex for this war. The Viet Cong control of South Vietnam grew while regular North Vietnamese army units covertly moved south. A series of CIA puppet governments had no popular support, and South Vietnam's army crumbled. So American combat troops arrived in 1965 to prevent a unified Vietnam and to preserve profits for major American corporations earned from the conflict. Archimedes Patty, the U.S. Army officer who had spent over a year with Ho Chi Minh, wrote a 1982 book about his experiences in Vietnam titled, Why Vietnam? He gave an interview, link below, where he stated, quote, During all the years of the Vietnam War, no one ever approached me to find out what happened in 1945 or in 44. In all the years that I spent in the Pentagon, Department of State, in the White House, never was I approached by anyone in authority. In my opinion, the Vietnam War was a great waste. There was no need for it to happen in the first place, at all. None whatsoever. <laughs> 